Hello everybody. Um, so this is medical terminology again. Today we're going to go over chapter nine, I believe. And um, it's over the eye and the ear. So we're going to go over the whole hearing system and then the whole seeing, the whole sight system too. So let me share my PowerPoint. We'll be on our way. Whoops. Okay. I'm recording. There we go. So eye and ear objectives. You see these every time. Okay. So let's start on my eye first. So everybody knows what the eye is. Well, here's a cross. Let's look at the bottom picture. Here's a cross section of the eye. Um, let's talk about the little, the different parts of the eye. Now in this class, you're not going to be um, tested on the parts of the eye but you might be in anatomy, but in order to understand the words that we're gonna be talking about today in class, I wanna go over the anatomy of the eye, just in simple, just simply, just so you can know a little bit about what we're talking about. Um, I'm gonna use my mouse to kind of hover over areas I want you to pay attention to here. So if we're looking at this cross section of the eye down here, whoops, wrong way, you can see, this very most outer layer here, it's called the conjunctiva. If you've ever heard of conjunctivitis, that means pink eye. You get inflammation of the conjunctiva. It's the very, very, very outer layer of the eyeball. And then you've got this real thick little layer here, little white part here, growing, and that's the cornea. The cornea is very up important. The cornea protects our lens and protects our iris and our pupil. Um, it's very, very um, important. Uh, the cornea can become detached sometimes during like with high velocity act, like speed accidents. Like if you have like a lot of like if you get hit from behind or from the front and you have a lot of neck flying back and forth or if you get hit from the side and fly back and forth. Um, sometimes the corneas can detach along with the retina too. Um, and you have to get those repaired and replaced. Corneas can also um, be um, donated from um, a cadaver. So when it, if you're an organ donator, when you die, they can take your corneas and give them to a person who um, is maybe having glaucoma, clouding of their, of their cornea, clouding of their vision, and it can help them see better. Then you have then you have some the aqueous humor humor is just a little liquid layer, and then the blue part in that eye, right here, is called the iris. And up in this top picture, that's where the that's the colored part of the eye, the iris. And then you've got the hole. This this black part here is not actually color. The color of black is actually a hole. This is the hole that light goes through. This is called our pupil, and the pupil changes in response size in response to light and darkness. Okay, let's come back down here. Right here where my mouse is hovering, this is where you have your lens. So just like a, any camera has a lens, your glasses have a lens, this is the lens for our eye. Right here. Well, whatever bounces off the light comes through bounces off the lens and hits the optic nerve hits the back of the retina down around the back of the eyeball and here's the optic nerve and the optic nerve takes that signal that of the light made an electrical impulse though here and the, the optic nerve takes it to our brain and then we um what's the word i'm looking for and we translate that into an image in our head. So then we know what we're seeing. Okay, here's a, here's a picture of the ear. We're gonna be talking about both of these today. So let's start on the, on the far side, on the left side of your screen. The big part, the whole ear itself, we call it the oracle or the pinna. Okay, so the whole part of the, the, the external part of the ear, the whole cartilaginous and and skinny and part with skin on it. That's called the oracle or the pinna. And then our actual ear canal is called the extor external auditory canal or meatus. External auditory meatus. Meatus means hole or canal. 
Mo I learned it as meatus, so most of the time I will probably say meatus. Then you see the eardrum, which is also called the tympanic, tympanic membrane. Then you see the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. Right after that, those are three little bitty bones that translate some vibrations from the tympanic membrane to the cochlea. And the cochlea is that snail-shaped organ that's blue on your screen that is a control of hearing. Now, these, th and that's all for the hearing. Now, you also see these things up at the top of the cochlea that look like three rings, and they're called semicircular canals. Those don't have to do with hearing, but that's where your inner ear system is for your, your balance and your, um, your equilibrium. And then both the semicircular canals and the cochlea both have a nerve um, they share, and that's cranial nerve eight, and it's also called the vestibulocochlear nerve. So it, that nerve has the vestibular part and the cochlear part, the balance and the hearing part, in it, and that nerve controls both. Okay, this is just the, if you start it up at the top, going from the cornea down, that just shows you the direction of light and what, when it hits the brain. And the same with the same here. <laughs> Excuse me, the ducks. Let's talk about root, word roots of the eye. So, blepher. Blepher means eyelid. I may have never heard that word before, but I will make you, I will make words with it in a minute. Blepher means eyelid. Cooper? No. Ace. Sorry about that. Ear or earid means iris. Carrot. Carrot means cornea. Think of like keratin, like your hair and your nails are made of. That's the same thing your cornea is made of. Ophthalm means eye. Think of ophthalmologist. When you want to go get your vision checked, you see an ophthalmologist. Opt means vision. So sometimes you can see an optometrist. You can see an ophthalmologist or an optometrist to get your vision checked. Retin means retina. Sclera. Sclera means sclera. And sclera is the white part of the eye. Okay, guys, sorry about that interruption. I had to move rooms to get away from my dog. Um, I apologize for that. Very unprofessional. Let's start where I was at. Okay, I was at sclera. So we said retina was retina, and sclera is sclera. Sclera is the white part of your eyeball that has no color. So the white part is the sclera. Okay, let's talk about word roots for the ear. Audi. This is not Audi, like the car. This is Audi, like audio, hearing. Mirroring or myring means eardrum or tympanic membrane. Oat means ear. This is not ot, this is oat. And we'll come up with some words with oat in a minute. Tympan means tympanic membrane or middle ear. So if you can't remember middle ear, at least if you remember tympanic membrane, and that is the eardrum, then you know you're in the middle ear because that's where the eardrum is, is in, right in the middle. Suffixes. Metry, measurement, kind of like meter. Plesia, or plesia, plesia, paralysis. Think of like hemiplegia. People that have strokes have hemiplegia. They have half, they're half paralyzed on one side of their body. Okay, eye suffixes or eye words. Blepharitis. Okay, so we've got itis, which is inflammation of. What is blepher? Blepher was eyelid, if you don't remember from one of the first slides. So this is inflammation of the eyelid. Blepharoplasty. This plasty is surgical repair of. So this is surgical repair of the eyelid. Blepharoptosis. Okay, we've had, we've had ptosis before. So think back in your mind, what is ptosis? We know blepher is eyelid. 
Okay, ptosis, if you remember, means drooping or sagging. So bullet for optosis is a drooping or sagging eyelid. And this can, this can happen with um, strokes. This can happen with different pathologies. Iridectomy would be a removal or surgical incision or part removal of part of the iris. Could be from an infection, virus, cancer, or whatever, damage, whatever. Iridoplegia is paralysis of the iris. You remember the iris is the colored part of the eye. So sometimes you might, I can, I think, I think I have a picture coming up of what a, of a person looks like after they've had an iridectomy where they've had part of the iris removed. It's just a dark spot missing in the color of the eye. And if a person had iridoplegia, that means that they wouldn't be, their eye wouldn't um, contract to make their pupil bigger and smaller because the iris is actually a muscle that controls that. Keratometer, keratometer which is um, a instrument for, hold on, instrument for measuring or analyzing the, it says for keratin. So that would be for the um, cornea. So this is a, something looking at the cornea. Keratoplasty is a surgical, Repair of the cornea. Ophthalmic. This is just pertaining to vision. Op ophthalm means vision. So this just means obtaining the vision. Pertaining to vision, sorry. Ophthalmologist is a, is a medical doctor that studies and treats the eye. So remember that, that I said medical doctor. Ophthalmologist is a medical doctor. Here's a little blepharitis, that's not too bad. Ophthalmoscope, scope, we know that's something that takes, that you can use to see things. So this is a scope or an instrument used to look in or around the eye. Optic just means vision or pertaining to the eye, vision. Optimeter is just some kind of instrument used for measuring something with the eye. It's not very specific. What we're measuring is just a tool. Optometry. Optometry is, the, is also measuring vision. Okay. So optometrists measure your vision, but so do ophthalmologists. Here's the difference. An ophthalmologist is a medical doctor that can do, that can they don't, they do more than just um, testing vision, but they can do surgical procedures on the eye too. An optometrist is not a medical doctor. Now they have a degree where they can test vision, get prescriptions for glasses or contacts and follow you through, through your life, but they do not have the, uh, the license or the education to perform surgical procedures and corrective things like that. So that's the difference. But they both, if you just need glasses, you can go to either one. Retinol just means pertaining to the retina. Retinitis, um, inflammation of the retina. Scleral just means pertaining to the sclera. Sclerotomy just means removal or opening a part of the sclera, opening up of the sclera. We've all had our eyes looked in with ophthalmoscopes. An audiologist is a person that studies hearing. So if you have to get your hearing tested, which we've all had to do as, as either infants, if whether you knew it or not, or toddlers or kids, um, an audiologist tested our hearing. Audiology is the study of hearing. Audiom audiometer is a instrument used to test hearing. Meringitis, that is inflammation of the eardrum or tympanic membrane. So that would be some kind of ear infection. Meringoplasty, that's a surgical repair of the eardrum. Meringotomy is a opening of the eardrum. 
surgical opening of the eardrum. Otitis. What was oat? Anybody remember? Oat meant ear. So otitis is inflammation of the ear. So this is this red, this red and what you look like, it looks like a red blood cell actually, but that's really supposed to be an inflamed eardrum and um, or a tympanic membrane. And that would be, they would be opening that up if there was some kind of fluid or infection behind it. And that's what you see coming out. Let's look at where's root from ear parts. Otoplasty, Odo is ear, plasty is surgical repair, surgical repair of the ear. Long, long word here. Bear with me. Otorhinolaryngologist. Otorhinolaryngologist. So let's break up this long word. Odo is ear. We know that. What's rhino? That's an old term we had a long time ago. Rhino was nose. Laryn means larynx. So the voice box. And ologist is a person that studies. So this person studies the ear, the nose, and the voice box or the throat. So this is an ear, nose, and throat doctor or an ENT. So anybody that you go to for an ear, nose, and throat doctor, they're actually, their, their real name is an otorhinolaryngologist. But who wants to say that and who can pronounce that? So they go by ENTs, ear, nose, and throat doctor. Uh, this is the study of the ear, nose, and throat. Odoria. What did rhea mean? Was rapid flow. So this is a flow of liquid coming out of the ear. So this is no bueno. This is, you never want fluid coming out of your ear of any type. Otoscope. Um, that would be a scope, a, a tool look, to look inside the ear. Tympanic just means tympanic membrane. Tympanoplasty. So we've got eardrum and plasty. So that will be surgical repair of the eardrum. Scope. Okay. What is an astigmatism? An astigmatism is an English word. And that's where you may have, I can't remember the exact, you may, you have a little bit of nearsightedness and a little bit of farsightedness on, your eyes are a little bit different. Um, usually you can't, I have an astigmatism and it's so, yeah, sometimes I have it when I'm, it, it actually will blur my vision after I've been reading for a long time, but only after a long time. And I do have a glasses prescription that I'm supposed to wear when I'm driving at night because that's when I have the most hard time reading signs is when it's late at night. But, you know, do I wear my glasses? No one. Cataract. What's a cataract? Cataract is a clouding of the lens and the cornea. So it's clouding of your vision. Detached retina. So that the retina is on the back of the eyeball from the back of the eyeball. And that's what can happen if um, with a high velocity thrust or hit. Glaucoma. Glaucoma is a disease is when you have too much pressure on the inside of your eyes. So we do actually have a certain amount of normal pressure on the inside of our eyeballs and glaucoma is an increased pressure in that fluid. Hyperopia, I do believe this means Nearsightedness. I don't remember. I always mess these up, guys. Hyperopia, I think, is nearsightedness, and myopia is farsightedness. But I might be wrong. So look that up in your book. We all know what LASIK is. LASIK is the vis laser um, vision correction. Macular degeneration. What is this? This is a. Um, this is a particularly sad dis, um, visual dis, dis degradation disease. Um, I mean, not that any way of losing your vision is sad, not sad, but this one is really sad because in most, like in cataracts and in golf, like with cataracts, you start getting cloudiness of your vision, but you can still see. 
or you might get some cloudiness on the side of the periphery of your vision, but you can still see everything in front of you. Well, macular degeneration, you actually start losing vision in the, in the center of your vision, and it starts getting dark here. You see darkness and dark, and it gets darker and darker as it progresses, and it gets wider and wider. You can always see on your periphery, but you can't see and make out things in front of you. And it is, and it is a progressive disease. And once you get it, there's no way to, there's no cure for it. But we, they can do some things to slow it. But um, you are going to lose the central part of your vision in the end of it. Optometrist. That's the person I said that um, is a person that can look at your eyes and study your eyes and write prescriptions for a vision correction, but they're not a medical doctor. So they can't, um, they can't do surgical or corrective procedures. Here's a cataract. This is an eyeball that's just very, very cloudy. Nothing's normal about that. Here's what a detached retina would look like. So you can see the retina is like an inner layer of the eyeball, but that's where light bounces off. And that's where all of our rods and cones are. So a detached retina, and we're not going to be able to see out of our eye anymore unless they, and they, until they surgically fix that. Here's, this is a close-up of LASIK. You can see they've taken the cornea and kind of cut it away and flapped it open. And then they've got that laser going right through the eye. A little scary, if you ask me. This is a, this is a picture of what happens with macular degeneration, degeneration. But just look at C. The picture that's there, that's what a person with macular degeneration would see. The center of their vision is blacked out. Maybe not completely, but almost completely, but then everything around it is clear. So they can never really look at, they, can never, they can't really read anything in front of them. They might, if they can read, they have to like hold it real far. They have to hold it down and look, and, and look down real, far, look real hard and strain their eyes. Um, it's a really debilitating disease. Let's talk about ear words. Otitis media. Otitis media is an ear infection or infection of the middle ear. Media means middle. Tinnitus. Tinnitus means ringing in your ears. So if you've got ringing in your ears from listening to loud music for a long time, that's tinnitus. Or if you get a concussion and then you have ringing in your ears, that's tinnitus or tinnitus. There's two ways to say it. Here's your healthy eardrum versus a infected eardrum. So ear infection. Let's look at a few abbreviations. This stands for, this is the abbreviation for macular degeneration, but the full name of the disease is age-related macular degeneration. AST stands for astigmatism. It's not stigmatism. It starts with an A, so it's astigmatism. ENT is rhino, uh, is otorhinolaryngology, ear, nose, and throat, otitis media, ophthalmologist or ophthalmic, and then you can look through these as you want to. And that would be all on the eye and the ear. So, um, if you have any questions, please, please feel free to send some, something my way, um, an email my way. Remember to turn in your assignment for this um, unit, and I will see you all later.